Well, thank you for joining our webcast today. I'm David Hadavis, President and CEO of CCNG, and joining me today is Doug Lipp. Doug's an industry keynote speaker and author of the newly released book, Disney U. And our discussion with Doug today will focus on his perspectives to developing engaged, loyal, customer-centric employees. And as a keynote speaker, Doug shares best practices around employee engagement across all industry types. Uh, as CCNG members know and share a great deal of interest in this area, Doug's agreed to share some of his perspectives with our membership today on this webcast. So we want to thank you, Doug, for that. Our discussion today is a part of the CCNG Optimizing Customer Contact series of programs and events. And for our viewers, you can find out more by visiting optimizingcustomercontact.com for details on an upcoming event and the speakers that we have planned this year. After Doug's presentation, we'll follow up with a few questions for him, and the total time today should be right around 15 to 20 minutes. So, Doug, let me say welcome. Thank you for your time with us today. And as you kick things off, maybe you could start by giving us a little bit of a background on your time with Disney. Sure, David. Well, first of all, thanks to you and the CCNG team for putting this together, and I want to welcome all the, all the members that are listening in, and I really appreciate their time and yours as well. And kind of getting to the point is my career with Disney started in Anaheim in California. I went to Japan. In fact, yesterday was the 30th anniversary of the opening of Tokyo Disneyland. I can't believe where time goes. And then from Tokyo Disneyland, I went to the Disney Studios. And in all three of those locations, Disneyland, Tokyo Disney, and then the Disney headquarters at Disney Studios, I was in the university the training and development division of the company. And when I got to the studios, I was actually the head of the training team. And Disney U is really about the experience that I had at the university from my mentor and from many leaders in the organization. And it was a tremendous journey. And quite frankly, David, those lessons that I learned for, gosh, 10, 15 years are as relevant today as they were then. I'd like to share with the, the, the team today and the audience today some of those lessons. And really, Disney U is much more than a how-to book. It's, it's about the founder of the university, and, and nobody knows about this guy. Everybody's heard about Walt Disney, and deservedly so. But what Walt did was he asked this gentleman, his name is Van, Van France, and he said to Van, you know, Van, we've created, we've built this park called Disneyland, and it's just a few months from opening. And we've had world-class architects come in here and design the buildings and design the grounds and the attractions. But now we need to populate it with people who will make it the happiest place on earth. And so Van has this challenge of, oh, sure, no problem, Walt. I can, I can hire and train a few hundred people in a, in a week or two and make it the happiest place on earth. And that's exactly what he had to do. And it's really a testament to Van France that he was able to take a crew of teenagers and mid-20-year-olds and present to them some ideas about service and, and leadership and other-centeredness that really formed the foundation of what many of us know Disney as today. And this was back in 1955 when Disneyland first opened. So it's 57 years and running. And it's the essence of, of Van's message, David, is, is found in California, Disneyland, and Walt Disney World in Florida, throughout the world, whether it's in Japan at Tokyo Disneyland or Hong Kong Disney or in Paris and in Shanghai in 2015 coming up. So really one of the things that I want to share with everybody who's listening today is the, the fundamental values that Walt Disney and Van France brought to the table are really ideas that can be used in any organization, as you mentioned in, in the lead-in. And I'll, there are a couple of quotes that I think exemplify both Walt Disney's mindset and Van France's mindset. And so here's the one from Walt that I, I love, and it's specifically, when the subject permits, we let fly with all the satire and gags at our command. Laughter is no enemy to learning. And so Walt Disney was all about we can educate and we can entertain at the same time, and that's what the Disney University tried to live and I think did a very good job of doing that. And then Van France said, and said this all the time to me, he was one of my mentors, 
He says, I was convinced that managers and owners could come and go, but Walt's, Walt Disney's dream would last forever. So it's about values, it's about perpetuating those values, and it's about sustainability. So what I've presented in my, in my brief comments today are really some of the ideas behind this quote-unquote magic of Disney University. And people oftentimes ask me, well, what is the the uniqueness of the university because so many training and development divisions and employee development organizations slap the name university on the side of their building or in their curriculum and really it's nothing more than a university in name only and the essence of, of what I write about in Disney U is those two quotes that I just talked about. It's entertain and educate like Walt Disney wanted and then as Van said perpetuate the values that are the foundation upon which you build any organization. So what I'm showing now is this concept of, of the Disney University culture. And to make it very simple for myself, and I, I really am a, a firm believer in what, what Van France used to talk about, is we need to make the, the complex as simple as possible. It doesn't mean that it makes it simplistic or dumbed down. It makes it, it, makes it visible and visceral so we can wrap our arms around it. And Van used to talk about creating a culture is more than slapping a coat of paint on a rundown building. It's based on the foundation of that building. And so oftentimes people will say, well, gosh, at Disney, you say cast members instead of employees, and you say guests instead of customers. And gosh, if we do that, wouldn't that be good enough? And I know a lot of organizations spend a lot of time debating amongst themselves do we call our customers patients or do we call them students or, you know, what are our customers going to be called? And I don't have a problem with discussing the nouns and verbs that we use to talk about our employees or our associates or our customers. But in many, in many circumstances, David, I see a lot of organizations that have much more challenging issues, fundamental cultural issues that they have to deal with before they start talking about the color of the paint they're going to slap on the side of the building. So what I want to share then are what Van France, this founder of the Disney University, identified as the four circumstances that really capture the essence of why the university has remained so successful for 50-plus years. And I'd like to start off with the first of these four. And the circumstances really are nothing more than values, which everybody knows the importance of values, but a lot of organizations don't quite wrap their arms around it. And so here's the first one is to innovate. And we all know that innovation is really important, but how many organizational leaders, how many middle management teams, how many frontline employees are encouraged to stir the pot and to really challenge each other? And I want to share with you a quote from a, a memo that Van sent to Walt Disney that basically challenged Walt and the team seven years into the starting of, Tok of, of U.S. Disney, Disneyland, seven years of unprecedented success. And Van sent this memo, and I have to – this is a, a fun quote. He said, budgets and schedules and reports and more reports and union negotiations, training programs, meetings, more meetings, handbooks, and I love this one, and cover-your-ass memos and endless things which take up our time are of no value unless they end up producing a happy guest. And one of the things that I learned from Van was, you know, you've got to bring up pointed and controversial ideas to keep people thinking. So innovation is is a fundamental value that I see a lot of organizations having a hard time with, and people are actually afraid to to speak truthfully in these in these challenging times because you know jobs are are t tough to come by and to hold on to. The next one is support, and again, these words are not sexy; they're not unique. But the way they come out behaviorally, I think, is an organizational support, meaning does the top person in that company, in that nonprofit organization, in that church, in that homeless shelter, whatever the organization is, are they unabashed cheerleaders of training and organizational development and employee development? And quite frankly, from Walt Disney all the way down through a number of executives over the decades, they stood up for the Disney University, and they mandated that people participate in programs, and they also mandated that the curriculum design specialists at Disney University produced a good product. So the organizational teams and the employees that go to programs are going to get a good product. So that's in insured, and then you've got the insurance that the executive team is going to, to sing your praises is something that I don't see in a lot of organizations these days. 
Team leaders will say this, you have to go to training and the training is garbage, so why should people go? I understand that. Likewise, you might have a compelling stellar training program, but it's not supported by the executives of the team. That's equally uh, problematic for a lot of organizations. So innovate, support, and then moving on to the next value really is education unto itself. And at Disneyland, at Disney Studios, Walt Disney started the the culture of training and the value of education way back in the 30s and 40s with his animators. I mean, he used to bring in people such as Frank Lloyd Wright to talk to his animators about concepts that would stir their imagination. And so really part of the DNA of the Disney organization is that education is valued and that it is something that is not negotiable. And when I say not negotiable, it's not about budget, because some people will say, well, gosh, if I have the budget and the cartoon characters and the Oscar award-winning products that Disney has, then, gosh, education would be a piece of cake. And really, it's not about the things. It's about the heart and soul of the organization. And so I would challenge anybody to say, you know what, it's not about budget. It's about creativity, and that's one of the things that, that Van France used to say to us at the university all the time is budgets are a convenient excuse for cowards. It's never a matter of a lack of money. It's a matter of a lack of creativity. So quite frankly, a five-minute pre- and post-shift huddle can be as or more effective than a multi-million dollar training program if it's done correctly. And then really bringing it back down to the fourth and final of these four circumstances is getting back to the quote that I shared at the top of the of the presentation with this concept of entertain. And again, that, that comment that, that Walt said, we will let fly with all the gags at our command. Laughter is, is no enemy to learning. It is okay to have an enjoyable training program. It doesn't mean that you reduce it to goofy jokes and, and slapstick comedy. It means that you make the programs memorable, whether it's through experiential exercises involving the trainees in much more than just cognitive or brain-focused stuff, but it's actual behavior-based activities that will reinforce the message and then make sure that that's alive and well on the front lines. And then just to kind of to wrap it up is there's a, a wonderful museum in San Francisco that's dedicated to Walt Disney and his daughter, Diane started it, and I was interviewing her for the book a few months ago, and she showed me a, a wonderful display, and it was a quote that Walt actually put in his high school newspaper when he was 17, maybe 18 years of age, and it said, develop your sense of humor, and eventually it will develop you. So even from a, from a high school age, Walt Disney, he was always about entertaining and educating uh, audiences, whether they were fellow students in his high school or world-class audiences in his theme parks. So again, I just think it's a matter of creating those values and creating those fundamental issues that are so much more important than the, than the slap of paint on that dilapidated building. So really to think about what can we do about this, it's really up to us. What is one thing that the folks that are listening today could stop doing, start doing, or continue doing to make sure that their culture reflects what they're all about. And it's more than the, uh, the superficial approaches and the band-aids, but it's getting to the, to the fundamentals of that organization. What would you like to start, stop, or continue doing? So those are kind of my thoughts, David, and I'm certainly open to uh, any questions or, or challenges or comments that you have. Well, I appreciate that. You uh, you covered a lot of ground and, and easy, easy for our audience of contact center and customer care people to relate to. We, uh, we certainly hear a lot about uh, hiring practices and training practices. We hear a lot from best practice organizations, the Zappos of this world, the lands in, creating a culture of service. And, and uh, this is very helpful, uh, I think, in, in people getting a different perspective. Um, yeah, I've made a lot of notes here, and, and but let me start off by asking you, for those people who are really not familiar with Disney U, you know, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about it? I mean, can, can other organizations attend it? Is it totally an internal program? You know, just, just describe it a little better, what its objectives of the program are. Certainly. Disney U is for the internal employees, the cast members of, of Disney Corporation, and 
in the mid-'80s, the Disney Institute was formed, and that's the one that a lot of people will send their employees to to learn about the Disney way and the Disney magic. So the, the Disney U is private, and it's for internal. The Disney Institute is what many people in the uh, corporate world have heard about and have sent their employees to, whether in Florida or in California. But the same concepts are applied, and they're taught, whether it's Walt Disney's values, uh, Michael Eisner's values, Bob Iger's values, whomever. And there's also some compelling tours of the parks with some of the ideas behind the, the show business aspect of the business world. Got it. Got it. You know, we're all, we're all about trying to uh, bring in the best people and get the most out of our people. Uh, obviously, there's not a contact center or customer service operation in the world that isn't interested in having the most engaged, loyal, customer-centric employees. But for a company that isn't isn't a Disney, it isn't as large as a Disney. How can they benefit from these lessons? Well, one of the one of the things is it's it's not about the the size of the budget or the the headcount of the contact center or whatever the the organization is is the it's the willingness and ability to go out and do these things. So, for example, there is a a chapter in the book that I talk about the the metaphor of walking the park and how Walt Disney and Van France would always go out and get in direct contact with the front lines, wherever the front lines happen to be. So in a contact center, if you're listening to recordings or if you're walking through the contact center and engaging with customers, with employees, with whomever, it's amazing to me, and I will challenge a lot of executives around the world. I say, Walt Disney could walk the park, and he was the head of a multinational corporation. He wasn't too busy. How come you don't do that? Or how come your managers don't do that? How come they're so busy looking at spreadsheets and they're in meetings, but they don't take the time to really understand what's going on on the front lines? And that always draws kind of a blank stare, quite frankly. And that's free, to walk, literally and figuratively walk in the park. You can do that, especially when you think about contact centers, because electronically you can touch more bases than you can just walking around. I think there are tremendous opportunities for every organization to do that. Excellent point. In fact, a number of our members have shared what they have done with their member to support their call center agents during customer service week. But it does start with taking an interest in being out there and seeing what's going on. You know, uh, as an entertainment brand, you know, Disney seems to have a training advantage in terms of uh, the experience. You, know, you talk about walking the park or, right. you know, familiar familiar songs you, you quote in the book, you know, Hakuna right. Matata or The Lion right. King. Um, you know, how can an organization that really doesn't have that kind of resource or non-entertainment brand still make training fun? You can make training fun in a variety of ways. And sometimes, quite frankly, a facilitator just has to ask, the trainees what they would like. I mean, sometimes we, we do our best to create something that we think would be engaging as an educator or a trainer, and we fail to think about the voice of the customer even within the organization. So the first thing that I would suggest to any, any training team is to go out and ask your customers, your internal customers, what would make our programs more engaging for you? And it doesn't mean that you, you again, play fun music or do anything that's untoward for that organization's culture, but it's Opening the door for some suggestions, I think, is is the key. Well, we, uh, as a matter of fact, have an event coming up that is focusing on uh, employee feedback and uh, customer feedback. We tend to see one side of that coin pretty easily, but not so much on the other side. Um, and you're, it's an excellent point. Uh, the successful companies are, are listening out of both ears, as it were. Yeah, you know, um, it's interesting. You know, I, I remember working with a with a call center in Canada that had calls coming in from around the world, and so by design they had a multinational, multicultural, multilingual team, and they saw some rifts between the groups. It wasn't there was animosity, but they just didn't understand each other. And the training team was just pulling their hair out, trying to figure, well, how do we make this enjoyable or fun? And I made a real simple suggestion because they didn't have the budget to do anything real fancy. I said, why don't you have a series of brown bag lunches or culture-based lunches once a week or once a month, whatever you can do, and have the groups from, they had maybe 10 different languages, 10 different cultures represented in that call center, and maybe you have a theme a month, a theme a week, where you let that cultural group expose to the rest of the team their customs, their food, and you have a themed lunch where people get to come in and actually sample literally the, the tastes and sounds and smells of that other culture. And after a few months of doing this, and every culture had its had its chance to present themselves through this 
lunch event, David, there was a tremendous reduction in the, the not only, not just the friction, but just the, the concerns about, gosh, how do I approach them? How do I deal with them? I don't know them very well. And all of a sudden, just through a series of free lunches, it had no cost to the company at all, the, the walls came crumbling down. Mm. Great story. Great story. Um, you know, as we wrap up here, let me just ask you one final question. Can you tell us what is the, the key message you repeat throughout Disney U? It's a, it's a quote that I would, I would attribute to the, the man who wrote the forward, and he's the retired chairman of Disneyland International, and he was my boss in Japan, and he opened up Euro Disney and was in the company for 40-some-odd years and was actually recruited by Walt Disney to help start the university with Van France. And he says that marketing is the time and the money and the energy you spend to get people in the door, whether it's good employees or, or customers. And training is the investment you make to get those customers to come back and your employees to stay. And it's got to be that balance. you got to get them in the door, but you gotta, you got to hold on to them. And the only way to do that is through training. And training can come in lots of different lots of different forms, David. Well, that's a that's a great way to wind it up. A wonderful uh, suggestion there. We we want to thank you really for taking time with us today and talking all about uh, employee engagement and making your employees superstars and the whole uh, ramification of that. It's it's very hot right now in customer service and everyone's trying to tackle it in different ways. And you know, if if a viewer takes one good idea from this. Um, you know, it's been beneficial. So we want to we want to thank you for taking time. We also want to, uh, of course, uh, congratulate you on your new book, Disney U. Can you tell uh, people, our viewers, how they can get a copy of your book? Well, the easiest way for most of us these days is electronically, and it's available on Amazon.com, and it's also available on BarnesandNoble.com. Say no more, right? Exit. Well, I mean, again, it's in stores too, but that's you know, it's easy with one click of the finger to get it. So <laughs> why go to a store these days, right? Exactly right. Well, we, we want to invite our viewers to connect with you. Um, you're out there, obviously, on a number of different uh, uh, social channels, so please reach out to Doug. Give him your feedback. We're going to be posting this webcast to our group on LinkedIn. So if you're not a member of that group, please join CCNG's group on LinkedIn, and we invite you uh, to share your comments not only with other members but with Doug, and uh, he'll be happy to respond. But, again, please uh, take the time to connect with Doug and, and reach out and get that book. Um, it'll be a great read. We can promise that. So, again, Doug, thanks so much for taking time with us today. We really appreciate it. David, thanks to you and the CCNG team and to all the members who listened today. I really appreciate your time. You bet. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.